Climate change is an issue which in recent years has been at the forefront of world politics, the media and the public consciousness. The British Council in Nigeria has helped spread the climate change message to well over 100 million people through the Interfaith Forum on Climate Change for Sub-Saharan Africa. The two-day event took place in Nigeria, bringing together some of Africa's main faith leaders for a discussion and debate on environmental issues. The conference was a direct response to the impact climate change is having on Nigeria. Research has found that many people don't understand the scientific language that surrounds climate change. Faith leaders discussed a number of issues, including the role of religious law in the environmental justice debate, why policymakers and faith leaders need to work together, and how faith leaders can inform and inspire their communities to tackle the effects of climate change. The Sultan of Sokoto is the supreme leader of the Islamic Council of Nigeria, which has 70 million followers. I believe uh, there's a lot of understanding now, not just within the faith leadership, but across the world, about the threats of climate change, or you can say global warming also, which uh, people also refer to it. And I think the important thing is that we've all identified this climate change as a real threat to our lives, to the lives of our people. And therefore, it's very important, having identified this threat, which I believe we have half of the solution. Now, the second half of the solution is for all of us to come together, sit together, and discuss on modalities, on the way forward in tackling this uh, menace of climate change. And therefore, there's need for all of us as faith leaders to come together, create this awareness within our followers to know exactly what climate change is all about, what we should do to check uh, this menace. Ben Fisher is the director of programs at the British Council in Nigeria. He explains how the people in the country perceive climate change. Climate change uh, is without doubt one of the uh, most important challenges that uh, we face globally. We now have a, a strong body of scientific evidence which suggests that uh, climate change is pervasive and uh, will affect uh, all aspects of, of society. It will affect uh, industry, in agriculture, in terms of uh, crop production. Uh, it will affect uh, people's ability to uh, find resources such as water. Uh, it will also affect uh, migration. So we, could, we, we should expect to see people migrating from areas that are uh, affected heavily by uh, climate change and desertification, for instance. Climate change is the, one of the uh, British Council's three main programme areas. And when we were designing the programmes, the first step uh, that we took was to commission some research into understanding and perceptions of climate change uh, here in Nigeria. So uh, what we did was uh, we, um, our, we uh, worked in partnership with BBC World Service Trust in order to carry out research across the whole of the country into people's perceptions of climate change. One of the key findings was that many people here in Nigeria link climate change to their faith. Um, there, there's a variance of, um, on, of philosophies behind this. Some people feel that uh, climate, ch the changing climate is a punishment from God and uh, that uh, they take a fatalistic perspective and say that there is nothing that we can do because God has uh, sent this as a punishment. Uh, but th there are also uh, a group of people who believe that religious texts uh, and uh, and uh, 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 for, for instance, traditions of religion, such as the Sunnah and the Hadith, uh, uh, state that we, are, we have been entrusted with the planet and that we should uh, act as stewards of the environment. Christianity accounts for half the Nigerian population. Reverend Dr. Samuel Kujiat and Reverend Joseph Hayab from the Christian Association of Nigeria explain how Christianity teaches the importance of looking after our environment. When you look into the Bible, um, you find out that when God, God first of all created 
a very perfect environment. And then he placed man into it. And then gave man uh, a, a command to till it, to manage it. And so because of that mismanagement, uh, in fact, somebody related, we've seen against the, the, the earth by doing things to it that we are not supposed to do. And so we are reaping the, the consequences of that. The droughts that we are seeing, the, 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 at one time, heavy forested areas are no longer there. And so we are, we are collect, I mean, the, the two faiths, let's take Islam and Christian, we are united in this reality because we, are, we all of us are living in the same environment that is being ravaged. Buddhists, Christians, Muslims together, sitting down to say, look, this is a problem of humanity, a problem challenging the global world where you and I live. Because the Hindus don't live in a different planet, neither do the Muslims live in a different planet, or Christians live in a different planet, we all live in the same planet. So we face these challenges together. One of the challenges facing the people of Nigeria is gully erosion, which occurs when water is channeled across unprotected land and washes away the soil along the drainage lines. Aminu Kabiru from the Forestation Project explains further. In Kano, in Tinki area of Gichi local government, people are suffering from this, what you call, gully erosion problem. The problem of gully erosion is as a result of the rainfall pattern. If you look at the, how the area it has been affected and the mode of pattern system is different from other places where you may have a very canopy area. This affects some of the farming system of this area of these people. A local farmer, Shuebu Jibrin, explains how his livelihood has been affected by gully erosion. The problem I'm experiencing now as a farmer is soil erosion and gullying. Some years ago, the yield on this farm of mine was very impressive. But as a result of desert encroachment and gullying, I'm losing part of my land where I cultivate. To be honest with you, the effect of climate change is much worse these days and we are taking this issue seriously now. First, you plant your crops, the wind uproots them. Then the issue of losing our farmland, the gullies which make the cultivation difficult. However, the Kano state government over these years has assisted in creating the windbreaks and this has really helped a lot. 